Well, PagerDuty started 15 years ago, and about uh, 10 years ago, we realized that we were collecting a lot of information from our customers in understanding all of the complexity in your technology ecosystems that causes glitches, that causes disruption, and that that information could be used to help companies improve their operational resilience to move from responding better and faster to preventing minor incidents from becoming materially impacting business issues. And so we started with AI and machine learning, using pattern recognition, surfacing similar incidents, consolidating, correlating events that could help you get smarter, and have added generative AI over the last few years that enables you to use natural language and just ask uh, our environment or our system to do things like catch me up. There's a major incident running right now. I'm just joining as a new responder or I'm an executive trying to understand my, what my risk is. Catch me up on everything that's happened in the last 10 hours. That used to take several people right. and many hours to string together. So you're now using that's it as an in internal thing. chatbot, effectively. Well, it's a combination of things. Analytics, deep analytics. Uh, we're using it to actually triage and diagnose events and also using it to automate the resolution to some incidents as well. Can, can, I don't know if you want to disclose which models you're using. We're using a lot of different models. We're taking um, a sort of best in breed approach. So we've built kind of a proxy environment that lets us use different models for different use cases. And we believe that there's going to be a lot of ongoing evolution and change. And it's too early to just choose one horse. I want to get back to that in a second because I think there's a lot of people right now who are trying to figure out which horse they're supposed to choose. And also, by the way, and I want to get into this too, using different models also creates a whole other level of complexity to the situation as well. Complexity is a really big challenge. Okay, so we'll talk about that and we'll also talk about some of the safety and security issues as well. But Mark, talk, talk about what you guys are using it for. So while well, talking about complexity, our business manages the critical infrastructure that enables mobility, cars and trucks stopping along the roadway and refueling. And we have a leading network for electric chargers. We have about 80,000 plugs under management. That's probably number two worldwide. And I don't think it's any secret that everybody's frustrated with the charging experience. And so we use AI, we have more than 10 years of data. We lead in countries like the Nordics that 90% of vehicles are electric vehicles, 25% of the car park is electrified, and we have 80% of publicly available chargers under our network. So AI is a big part of getting to a much more reliable uptime of the network and a better consumer interface. And what does that mean in terms of, again, in sort of the actual models that you're using, the services that you're using, uh, outside third parties versus developing stuff yourself? Yeah, we leverage also a lot of third parties and we incorporate that with a couple different models. I think the key thing is you've got to get the data to be able to run AI on top of it. If you don't have a database to work with, and think about the complexity of this, we can charge any vehicle that'll show up. There's a lot of Chinese vehicles on the road, EV vehicles. Right. There's, of course, Teslas on the road. There's you know, European cars on the road. And there's a whole plethora of different chargers that are in use. It's not just one charger and one manufacturer. So think of the data that you have to begin to compile to be effective with AI on that. Have you started to use AI to actually resort the data, meaning to actually organize the data? So one of the big problems is we've all, we can talk and get into is the data problem, which is that half of it will be beyond the garbage in, garbage out, is just whether it's sortable. And now we're finding that some of these large language models you can actually use to help you actually put the data into a tabular set so it actually can be used in a meaningful way. Yeah, I think that's really key, particularly because think about all this handshaking that has to occur, which is not AI, but that capability requires a, a competency on sorting because you have to categorize it by type vehicles, type charters, and, and compile all that data on you. But are, are you using AI for that or are you, are you out? I mean, then there's this whole other industry, as you know, where you can outsource the retabulation of data uh, to humans that are doing this oftentimes in other countries. Yeah, no, much... we're not doing that. I don't think it's really possible when you're thinking about literally terabytes of data and uptime when you're trying to guarantee 99% uptime of a network. I don't think there's a manual model that would work. Right. I didn't know if they were going out and tagging this stuff, but we yeah, can talk yeah. about tagging because that's a whole other uh, piece, piece of this. Whole logic, how are you doing it? 
We're really coming from the, the customer angle in and having it in our products. And I'll give you one quick data point that I hope you'll all remember. Go back to the 1980s. Women, white women and black women in the United States died of breast cancer at an equal rate. Despite incredible technology advances over the last 40 years, today black women die at 40% higher rates than white women, despite the incidence being the same. And I think what it comes down to in real simple terms is there's incredible disparity in healthcare. We tend to think of it as science. There's still way too much art and guesswork. So you have disparities of healthcare. The advancing technologies have actually exacerbated the gap. For most of us in this room, we get really good care because you go to thought leading institutions, whatever else. But so many women in this country can't or around the world can't get great care. And then you have the pressure on the workforce. So to me, the magic that AI is bringing, for example, in our case, when we invented 3D mammography, it's a dramatic enhancement of reducing false positives, raising the, the detection of cancers. But there's a lot more images to read. And so, Andrew, to your point, we started out really with machine learning, both for our pap tests and our breast cancer screening, but increasingly able to leverage that for the future much more into AI, because this is pattern recognition and can be incredibly efficient and provide better care. So we're really coming at it to simplify the workflow for our customers and enhance the outcome.